Hello and welcome to 101 Code. My name is Moaz Nashawi. If you like our videos, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and turn on the notification so you can see all the new videos. In this video, we're gonna talk about general Java rules. We're gonna talk about syntax. We're gonna talk about uh, the modifiers and identifiers, naming conventions, and a lot more. So without any further ado, let's get started. So if we want to talk about a general definition for a programming language or for a Java language for in, in this specific video, we can say it's a collection of objects that communicate via invoking each other methods. Let's see some of that in action. Let's first talk about some uh, the general terminologies in uh, Java. First, we start with the class. What, the, what is the class? A class can be defined as a template or, of, or blueprint that describes the behavior state uh, the object of its type supports. Let's start by seeing some of the general Java labels of, or naming. First, we start with the class. A class in Java, it's, it, we can define it as a template or blueprint that describes the behavior state that the project of its type support. Uh, what that mean? That mean each class, let's see some class in action here, dog class. Each class, it's like a blueprint. It will have some states or properties, like um, for example, let's speak about a dog. If we wanna define a class for a dog, it will be, the dog has some properties or states, which is the breed, for example, color and names. And also it has a behavior, which in Java is method. Uh, the dog can wedging his tail, can barking and can eating. So this is methods, it's a little bit like a behavior. So the class in general is this blueprint, which contain all of uh, the states and behavior of uh, a specific object. And the second one is the method. Uh, as we said, the method is basically a behavior. Each, each uh, object in this live has, uh, as we said, a state and behavior. So the method is the behavior. Uh, one class can contain unlimited methods. Uh, if we wanna speak about the general purpose of the method, it's uh, the method where the logics are written. So. Let's see some method in action. For example, in our dog class here, we have the barking method. This, bar this method, we have some logic that uh, in, in, in real life, if we're writing a, a real project, we will have some logic here, some calculation or some action to be made. But here we just print a message. So uh, the behavior of the dog is now uh, it's barking. So if we wanna, for example, uh, say, tell the dog to start barking, we just can call this method barking. And once we call it, now the dog will start barking, for example, in real life. So as we said, the logic here inside the method is the behavior that we wanna uh, execute. So in each class, when you define, you define the properties, the properties doesn't do anything, it, it just hold the information. But the method is where the action happen, where the logic, where the coding happen. So here are the properties and here are the behavior. And instance variable, uh, it's like a class properties. Each pro object has its unique set of instance variable. An object state is created by the value assigned to this instance variable. Remember we speak about, we said uh, we ha each object in this world has a state and has a behavior. So the state is set by this properties here, breed, color, name, this is the state or the properties. So uh, as we said, an object state is created by the value assigned to this instance variables. And now talk about object, which is uh, summarizing all the other that we'll talk about. The object is an, inst an instance of a class. So uh, we said the class is the blueprint. So imagine that you're just writing the blueprint, which is the dog class here, and an object is an instant of a class. So let's see this in action. Uh, let's see here in our main that we want dog class. We wanna create a new object of dog class type. 
So dog, cl dog class, as you see, it's our custom made uh, class. So my dog, let's call it my dog, is equal to new dog class. And here I have to give the breed, let's say bitball. And what also do we have? Color, it's black. I'm setting here the state of the uh, the object. And what's the other, the last one, the name, it's doggy. Let's say doggy. Now I have object. My dog is an object. It's an instant of the class. So now I can do, or for example here, let's use static so I can use it inside another static method. So here now, if I want my dog to be park, to parking, start parking, I can say my dog parking. Now if I run this, I'll get doggy is barking. This is the overview about uh, the object. And as we said, the object is one of the most important aspects of any programming language. Now let's get to the basic syntax of Java. First, Java is case sensitive. That means if you have an identifier which has, for example, a first capital letter and you use a small letter, it would have a different meaning and it will, uh, for example, throw an error if you do that. Let's see this in action. Now, as you can see, we have a dog class here, uh, the, the class that we already defined. It's the first letter is uh, capital, first letter of each word is capital. Now, if I try here to use a small letter, I will get a compilation error because there is no, uh, the compiler now cannot find this class. So case sensitive, we have to, this is one of the first basic syntax that you have to be aware if you want to start writing uh, Java. Let's talk now about uh, some naming convention. Let's start with the class names. Uh, the general guideline or the standard uh, guidelines uh, for Java is that for all class names, the first letter should be in uppercase if several words are used to form a name of the class, each inner word first letter should be in uppercase. As you can see here, uh, when we define a dog, a dog class, uh, I used the capital letter on each first word. This is the standard guideline. If you try to use a small uh, letter, it will work, but you, you're gonna be like, uh, you're gonna do this alone. No, no, no one in uh, writing Java is putting uh, small words inside the, the class title. And uh, it's also gonna be confusing when you uh, you're start uh, writing logic inside your project. So, Always start your class with a capital letters, class name with a capital letters. And for method names, the rule is different. The rule said that all method names should start with a lowercase letter. If several words are used to form the name of the method, then each inner word's first letter should be in uppercase, uh, which this, this naming convention rule called camel case. So you have example here the method like my method name here let's see it inside the code it's always better to see it inside the code here inside the dog class we have waging tail uh, method and parking method and eating method as you can see in waging tail it's always the first letter is always small when you define the method but if you have two words the second word or the third or the fourth and etc it will have a first capital letter so you it, it's more readable and as we said it's a standard in uh, the java writing code industry and at least in the basic syntax for the program file name name of the program file should exactly match the class name what is that supposed to mean like here as you can see we already defined our dog class the name of the class is dog class the name of the file it must be identical to the class name so dog class if you try here to use also a small for example let's refactor if you try here to use a small letter that will give you an error so always 
uh, I always try to name your file the same as your class. And if you're using IDE like IntelliJ, once you just once you uh, try to create a new class, it will do that by itself. For example, second custom class. As you can see now, we create a new class. Uh, automatically, uh, IntelliJ give the name of the class of the file and then uh, identical to the name of the class and file here. So this was uh, also need to be were, uh, aware of when you write Java. Now let's talk about Java identifier. What is Java identifier? In general, all Java compi components require names. Names used for classes, for variables, and method. Everything you want to use, you give it a name. So those names are called identifiers. And there's a rules for naming uh, the identifiers in Java. The first rule, all identifiers should begin with a letter from A to Z uh, capital or small. Currency character is also allowed and the underscore is also allowed. So what that means, let's see it in action. You can uh, hear the identifiers. Uh, this is some of the allowed uh, example. Uh, we said the dollar sign is allowed to be at the start. And also underscore, for example, is allowed to be at the start of the uh, of the variable name or the property name. Otherwise, any other thing uh, instead of the letters, capital or small, will uh, throw an error. As we say, this rule is about the start of the variable name. So after you, you write your first letter in the variable name, then you can use, uh, for example, a combination of numbers and dollar sign and underscore like the example in here. But if you try to use number, for example, at the start, you will get an error. So this is the general rule. Always start your variable name with either a letter or dollar sign. And uh, worth to mention about the dollar sign, in Java, we don't use it a lot. So it, it's, it's going to look weird inside the, the program if you use the dollar sign as a start of your uh, variable. So let's say, let's talk about that. Let's say it's a, a standard uh, guideline. So don't use it like this. As, an, as the underscore, as we said, you can use it at the beginning or inside the variable name. And for the most uh, important uh, rule in naming the identifier, you cannot use a reserved keyword uh, as an identifier name. What that's supposed to mean? There are some reserved keywords. Uh, it's special for the language. You can't use it. For example, a string is a special keyword uh, which is reserved. So you can't just say, I want to... Uh, define a property string and I call it string. No, that will give you an error. But as we say, because Java is case sensitive, you can write string string that it's like a uh, walk around this uh, problem. Okay. But uh, you have to be careful about the reserved keyword. And to discuss, to see the reserved keyword, we have the table in here. This table has all the reserved keywords. So these keywords here, you can you cannot use as a identifier to name your, uh, your your identifiers. Let's see some example of forbidden uh, identifier names. Let's uncomment this. As you can see here, we can start our we can't start our uh, variable name or property name with a number. We can't start it with a dash or any special character backslash or slash. We can use it with a comma. So this, this is the general rule of naming identifiers in uh, Java. Now let's talk about commenting in Java. We have two types of comments in Java. We have first the single line comment, and you can uh, write a single line comment by using slash double slash. So you put two slashes, everything come after those two slashes on the single line on the same line is considered to be comments. But as we said, this is a single line comment. Now, if you press enter, you're getting back to the editing mode. It's not comment anywhere. 
anyway, uh, anymore. The second category of the commenting is the multi-line comment. You can write a multi-line comment by using slash, star, and you can, this is, this, in this way, you open the multi-line comments. And you can end it with star and slash again. So everything comes, uh, everything you write inside those uh, two slashes will be considered as a comment. So comment on the first line, comment on the second line. As you can see here, we can write multiple uh, comments, not like the single line of comments. Now, let's talk about the Java modifiers. There's two types of modifiers in Java. There's the access modifiers, which is reserved keywords uh, to set the access of the class. This is a more like an advanced topic, actually. We're going to have a separate video for uh, dis discussing the access modifiers. And the other type is the strict modifiers, or what we call non-access modifiers, which is define some strict rule for the variable. Like, for example, final, if you want to... If you want to define a constant uh, variable which uh, its value will never change or uh, edited inside your code. This, as we said uh, in a different uh, video. That's it for the video today. In next videos, we'll talk more about Java. Until then, if you like our videos, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And turn on the notifications so you can see all the new videos.